Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. Today we're taking a day trip from Kyoto to Nara. We get to see the Tadeji Temple. We wander through Nara Park and get accosted by some very friendly deer. We get to see the world's biggest bronze statue of the Buddha. We see other people get accosted by friendly deer. We get to wander around very tranquil traditional Japanese gardens. We see yet more deer. We take the bus and regional train and head back to Kyoto. For dinner, I head to an Italian restaurant and have an interesting meal. Join me. We set off on a day trip to Nara. Nara was around 45 kilometers and a 40 minute train trip from Kyoto Station. Once we arrived at Nara Station, we caught the local bus. The local bus runs every 15 to 20 minutes. And it takes about 15 minutes or so to reach Nara Park, our destination for the day. The bus ticket was only 250 yen for a one way ride. That's around $2.50 Australian quite reasonably priced uh, as is all public transport in Japan. There were quite a few people trying to get on and the bus was absolutely packed. It was reasonably early in the morning and I'd imagine the bus would just get more and more packed as the day wore on. The journey was about one and a half kilometers and it was a pretty hot day and uh, we saw uh, quite a few tourists waiting at the bus stop uh, were unable to go on because the bus was so packed so my advice would be to get on at Nara station and go the full distance via bus. It didn't take us long and we arrived at Nara Park. Nara Park is the home to many many different shrines and temples as well as extensive gardens and so many wild but placid and friendly deer. Now it just wasn't one or two deer it was hundreds and hundreds of wild deer all scattered throughout Nara Park all waiting to be fed rice crackers that are eagerly being sold by countless vendors that were also scattered around Nara Park. In doing some research about visiting Nara and Nara Park, I did come across a YouTube story from a young lady that was bitten by a tick that uh, emanated from one of these deer. She got very, very sick. The uh, bite got infected and she nearly lost her leg. So being the risk adverse person that I am, I stayed well away from these deer and didn't let them touch me. I did look on while others interacted with them though. Hey, it's Maximo and here I am at Nara at Todai J Shrine. This shrine was uh, dating back from the 6th century. The first big building that you see when you enter the uh, Todaiji Temple Complex is the Great South Gate. It rises over 25 meters on the stone plinth on which it rests. It is the largest temple gate entrance of any temple in the whole of Japan. Very fitting considering that it is the uh, leading up to the, the Great Hall with the Great Buddha inside. It is considered a national treasure. It's truly unique. And there's also two humongous statues on each end of the gate itself. Once through the Great Southern Gate, we made our way down a very wide um, road past many deer and quite a few tourists towards the Great Buddha Hall. The Great Buddha Hall is uh, flanked by a nice ornamental lake and it features the biggest wooden structure in the world. The whole temple complex is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it has quite deep cultural and religious significance in Japan. This temple is also considered one of Japan's greatest national treasures. It was opened in 1752 and this particular hall has been destroyed by fire and rebuilt a couple of times. The closer you get to the building, the more impressive it becomes. The total height of the building is around about 49 metres high. It's 57 metres uh, wide and has a length of about 50 and a half metres long. All in all, a truly impressive building made of wood, all without the use of nails or screws. 
truly impressive. And it's not until you're standing right next to the building that you notice the intricate designs and architectural features that adorn both the inside and outside of the temple. And once you step into the building, you get a glimpse of the Varo Kanan Buddha. This is one of the largest Buddha statues in the world and the largest cast bronze Buddha statue in Japan. This is a truly spectacular building and it's a truly spectacular statue. The uh, vantage points from different perspectives um, just signify the, the magnificence and, and the, the scale of this, uh, of this religious uh, building. It, uh, it's hard to describe. You've really got to go. And if you're wondering what these people are doing, well, this uh, hole through the big pillar is said to signify Buddha's nostril, uh, the, the statue, that is. And for those that can actually fit through it, they'll be able to seek enlightenment in the next life. I don't think I'd get my arm or leg through there, so it looks like I'll have to live my next life in unenlightenment, if that's the word. We had such a marvellous time at the Tadaiji Temple. Next, we made our way to the Ozaijen Garden and Museum Complex. This is only about 250 metres away and a few minutes walk. These gardens date back to the 1670s. There's actually two gardens. One is a strolling garden and the other one is a more uh, formal uh, garden that uh, contains a pond and was intended to reflect the natural um, surroundings of mountains and waters so you get two gardens for the price of one and each garden was created in a different period one was created in the Edo period and the other one in the Meiji period before we went to the gardens we spent some time going through the museum thank goodness it was air conditioned and we were able to get some respite from the heat and humidity outside we spent a little to little bit of time going through the museum and looking at all the different uh, artworks the artworks were collected by an industrial family the nakamura family over three generations and the family actually bought the gardens and built the museum to be able to show their collected uh, family artworks the museum wasn't huge. We finished uh, there in about 15 minutes and then started to have a stroll around the very impressive gardens.
beautiful fancy menu here in this beautiful garden. It's so tranquil here. It really is. This is probably one of the hottest and most uncomfortable days that we spent in Japan. Whilst the gardens were fantastic, the heat and humidity really took it out of us. We decided to slowly make our way back to Nara Park and catch the bus back to the Nara train station and back to our hotel in Kyoto. Along the way we saw many many deer and many people interacting with deer. So we walked towards the bus station and right near the bus station was a Starbucks. We decided to go in and rehydrate and have a iced cold matcha. We jumped on the bus and headed back to the Nara train station. It was a pity because we'd like to have been able to see more shrines and more of the attractions of Nara but it was just too damn hot. So we got to Nara station and it didn't uh, take us long to wait for us to get our train back to Kyoto station. We would have liked to have done more in Nara, but the heat and humidity did get to us. We made our way back to Kyoto for a well-earned rest in the hotel. After a well-earned rest and a swim at the hotel, I decided to go out by myself. Joe was happy to pick up just a couple of things from the convenience store at Kyoto Station. Now it might seem that I've done a lot of eating out by myself, but this was the exception rather than the rule. And I just, I guess, found that it was easier to take extended videos of my restaurant capers by myself rather than with Joe. We went to the Cucina Italiana, which by the way, it's rated one of the top five restaurants at Kyoto Station. The ambience was really good. It was quite an authentic Italian experience and the food was great too. My sake. I'm fine. I know that sake wasn't very Italian, but when in Rome, right? Anyway, my first dish arrived, which was a prosciutto salad. It was very, very nice. The prosciutto was very authentic and uh, flavorful. The salad and the salad dressing was fantastic too. I really enjoyed this. I have some wagyu steak with roasted potatoes. Looking forward to it. The wagyu was flavorful, juicy and tender and expertly cooked just the way I like it. It was a fantastic meal. The meal cost 3,256 yen which was quite reasonable considering I had three drinks. I had the sake and a couple of uh, glasses of wine. Fantastic restaurant, I would recommend it. And I'd also recommend Nara as a fantastic day trip from Kyoto or Osaka. I do hope you've liked this video. If so, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and hit that notify bell so you can get notified of my future travel videos. Consider buying me a coffee to support this channel. And on that note, I leave you. Take care and until my next video, bye now. Thank you.